All right, match number five on the play. If this was a forest, I could keep it. Because I could go turn one and abundant growth the forest. As it is, the mana is just too bad. Double Renegade Freighter is pretty awful. It's sort of like having no spells in hand at all. I'd have to draw another creature and then have it survive long enough to crew these. But I don't want to go down to five, so let's keep it and just hope that these freighters toot toot my way to victory. All right, right tiers. I'm gonna put on the bottom. I know I need a creature to to uh, crew these things, but it's a three drop. Although I guess I can go three drop freighter into Riot Tears next. Uh, I still don't want it. I want a cheaper creature. I guess I would have wanted to play Terramorphic Turn 1 to thin my deck out anyway, so... Not that big of a deal whether I had kept it on top. Tribal Flames. Poor Skyfisher. Alright, there's the freighter. Next turn I want to draw an Abundant Growth or Nalia's Presence. Play it, play the Core Skyfisher, pick the enchantment up, and then crew the Renegade Freighter all in one turn. White, blue. I wonder what kind of deck this is. White, blue, and black. Stinkweed Imp. Asper Dredge? I am in intrigued. Well, I don't really want to trade, so that means I should kill the Stinkweed Imp before I hit them upside the face for five. Fortunately, I don't have any way to exile this or get it out of the graveyard, which means they're just going to get to Dredge. And Dredge 6 is pretty big. Dredge 5, excuse me. But I also need to kill them before they can take advantage of all, all these cards in their hand. And they'll probably find a way to start filling up their graveyard regardless. So I could just Renegade Freighter, pass, and then next turn hope to draw a creature and crew these both at the same time. Attack for 10, trample, next turn attack for 5-ish, trample, and Lightning Bolt plus Tribal Flames my way to victory. Yeah, actually that sounds a little bit better. That slows down their trudging by at least a turn. Killing them all in one go or in two attacks is a lot better against Stinkweed Imp. Because if they can trade off with one thing a turn with Stinkweed Imp, that's pretty bad for me. Alright. Just use my mana here. Since I'm going to be wanting to attack with these freighters. Abundant growth, okay. Floating a green mana here, so that I can replay the abundant growth. Diabolic Edict, okay. Now the question is, what do I sacrifice? In a dream world, I could sacrifice Core Skyfisher, attack for five, and then play the abundant growth and have two creatures again next turn in my next two draw steps and then be able to attack with both of these but most likely I'm not going to be able to take advantage of both these freighters so I have to sacrifice the vehicle instead and once again I should have fetched first I would have gone and gotten a mountain so let's hope that I don't draw a mountain okay I didn't draw a mountain that's a weird thing with this deck. Normally you fetch at the end of uh, your opponent's end step, but if you're drawing cards on your main phase, maybe you want to fetch first to decrease your odds of drawing lands. Journey to Nowhere. Alrighty. Can't do anything about that. Stinkweed Imp. Which they had dredged back. Crypt Rats. Hmm, I wonder what kind of deck this is. 
Griselli Pride Mage, that can go get my Core Sky Fisher and let me redraw my uh, Abundant Growth yet again. And now, do I want to kill the Stinkweed Imp and attack for five? Or six, rather. Yeah, I think that's worth it. Goodbye. Okay. And they get the dredge again, if they want to. All right, they choose the dredge again. Angelic Renewal is a pretty cool card. It's like a resurrect effect, but you have to play the Angelic Renewal first. Core Sky Fisher, picking up a land probably. Yep, they pick up a swamp, play the swamp. All right, they're at two cards in hand. The Stinkweed Up is really good versus our deck. No way to get rid of it. And we're a creature-based deck, so they can just trade off as many times as they want. Should I sacrifice Quizali Pride Mage? Yes, I should. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attack with Quizali Pride Mage, just in case they're going to let me in unblocked. All right, yeah, they're... they're oh, okay. If they're going to give me the... Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, this is fine with me. I get to trade these two, and that doesn't kill the Stinkweed Imp. I think that's reasonable. So do I want to trade these, or do I want to get back my core Skyfisher? That is the question. Skyfisher is just another card right now. Another card is pretty good. Yeah, I believe I'm just going to let this trade happen. And pass the turn. Monk Idealist. Okay, getting back what? Angelic Renewal or Dead Weight? Angelic Renewal, okay. And casting it. This doesn't really work well with Stinkweed Imp because they don't want to return the Stinkweed Imp. They want to dredge the Stinkweed Imp back to their hand. But it does mean if I kill the Monk Idealist, then they can sacrifice this and return the Monk Idealist. So I think that means they get infinite Monk Idealist blockers, which is kind of cool. This is another deck that I want to try out. Okay, a Curd Ape. Still don't want to trade with this Stinkly Imp for just a little bit of trample damage. Mole Drifter. They go up to four cards in hand. Tribal Flames. And now, if I kill this Stinkweed Imp and I attack, and they block with Mole Drifter, and they sacrifice Angelic Renewal to get it back, they get to draw two cards, which is awful for me. So I think the only way I'm winning this game is if they don't gain... Uh, more than one more life, and then I have three tribal flames in Annihilia's presence, and I just kill them like that. But they'll probably be able to kill me first with the flyers. Chainer's Edict, okay. Could have gotten a renegade, rid of a renegade freighter here, but instead, but decided not to. Okay, Annihilia's presence, that's step one. Draw a Tribal Flames, please. Perfect. That's 10 damage. Um, pass. I could attack with this here, and then if they only block with Stinkweed Imp, I would have not had enough damage. That would have only been 3 Trample damage. Uh, I'll get rid of the Ape. I need this Renegade Freighter to trample over. If it somehow tramples for 4... Okay, they're not... Yeah, I'm taking a bunch of damage here. If I could get this to trample for four, I could win. But I don't have any creatures whatsoever, so that's not going to happen, apparently. They are very smartly not attacking with the Stinkweed Imp. Another Mold Rifter, go up to seven cards in hand. This is 
kind of the exact same thing that we already played against. The third match was a blue-black deck that had um, Cheddar Rats, Mole Drifter, and Ghostly Flicker. And this one has, is a blue-black deck that has Mole Drifter and basically their version of Ghostly Flicker, which is Angelic Renewal. Matka Rioteers. Okay, I need them to not block for some really strange, silly reason. Yeah, they're giving me everything. They don't want me to trample over at all. What are they going to bring back with Angelic Renewal? Mole Drifter? Makes sense. And I can remove two things and only take five damage, but I'm effectively dead, so I will concede. So I don't really have a chance this game, unfortunately. I can't get beat a Stinkweed up, basically at all. Electricity does nothing. Ray of Revelation could take out an Angelic Renewal before they get a chance to get value off of it, which is okay. It stops the infinitely blocking Monk Idealist. And it stops the Mold Drifter getting back. Vines of Vastwood is not really that great against them. Ancient Grudge doesn't do anything. Pyro Blast only hits Mold Drifter. So I don't think it's good enough. I guess Angelic Renewal is also really good with evoking a Mold Drifter. You play turn 2 Angelic Renewal, turn 3 Evoke a Mold Drifter. In which case I would want the Pyro Blast, but I don't think we can afford to play around that. So the question is, do we want these Ray of Revelations or not? I don't think I do. I think the incidental enchantment removal off the Quasali Pride Mage is just going to have to be enough. And we'll submit with no sideboard cards. Between this and match number four against Demir Teachings, I really wish we had some Relic of Progenitus in the sideboard. Alright, play first. Um, this hand is unkeepable, I think. All right, we'll keep this and hope it works. Uh, evolving Wilds, don't really want that. All right, now I get to play Curdape. Fetch again, pass. Three-win inspector, okay. Kozali pride mage, okay. Attack. And I think I should just go ahead and get rid of this. Don't even give them the opportunity to chump block or do anything scary later. Chainer's Edict. This attacks for three, which is better. And it could take out an Angelic Renewal, so I think I'll keep the Pride Mage. Sacrifice their clue, main phase, to try to hit their land drop, which they do. Diabolic Edict, okay. If I draw Nylia's Presence, I'll really have wished I had the right tears, but I can't count on that. Alrighty. One, two. This is going to be awkward if I draw a Wild and Coddle if I target one of my forests. But it'll be awkward if I draw a Red Spell next turn if I target the Mountain. Oh, I'll go with this. Tribal Flames, okay. Hopefully I don't have a need to cast both these next turn.
Journey to Nowhere. Alright, well I can sacrifice this to blow up the journey if I would rather these two things be in the graveyard than with the journey on the battlefield. But I actually would rather it be trapped underneath there in case I draw another Quizali Pride Mage and they target that Quizali Pride Mage with removal, then I can cash it in to get back it, the first one. Alright, they cycle their land drop here. I'll move this out of the way so I can attack. They have five cards, what can they do? Stinkweed Imp. Alright, well that's GG. Tortured Existence. Didn't see any of that the first game, but that makes sense. Now I need to go for the Triple Tribal Flames kill, or the Tribal Flames Tribal Flames Lightning Bolt kill. Core Sky Fisher of their own. Picking up Stinkweed Imp. Tortured Existence. Discarding Stinkweed Imp to go get Thraven Inspector. Play the Thraven. Now that every single time they feel comfortable dredging five, they can get this, it back to a discard Tortured Existence to draw a different creature out of their graveyard, such as the second Core Sky Fisher. And we draw another land. Uh, they decided to dredge here, which gives them a lot of choices to go get. And they can Kami as many turns as they want to. Well, as many turns as they can afford to dredge five. Mole Drifter comes down, they go to four cards in hand. Yeah, I think this game is over. And another fetch. We'll give them one more turn just to see what they can do. On upkeep, get back their mole drifter discarding stinkweed. Dredge stinkweed. Angelic renewal. Now they're going to evoke the mole drifter. Oh, value town. Draw two cards, bring back the Mold Drifter, draw another two cards. Oh, that's insane. Makarai Tears. I could draw Nelia's Presence into Tribal Flames and then them let something through unblocked, specifically a three power thing. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could happen. Since I have to draw Nelia's Presence to win, I'm keeping the Makarai Tears and letting them hit me for six in the air. Kami of False Hope. That prevents combat damage. Chainer's Edict. Slap me for six again. Angelic Renewal. Well, this is another really cool deck. Let me know in the comments whether you want me to play the the match three deck we encountered, the Demir Flicker, or this uh, Esper Angelic Renewal deck. They dredge again.
they get back the Oromancer, the Oromancer gets back the Angelic removal, so yep, they get infinite Oromancer now. Combined with a Sacrifice Outlet? Like if they just played a single Sacrifice this creature, get plus one, plus one counter, or plus two, plus two until end of turn, or something like that, they could also attack infinitely. Well, in any case, they beat us. We only went 1-4 overall. I thought the deck was a little bit better than that, even if it's not a tier 1 deck. I thought it was maybe a 2-3 or a 3-2 deck. It definitely had problems versus control decks. It did fine against elves, but it, the next four matches were all against control. And as you saw, we did not fare well against control. Surprisingly, against Kaldoth and Jeskai, we did pretty well. We held our own, despite it going on for a very long number of turns. In any case, I hope you enjoy the videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This has been Jake with Plain Popper, and I will see you next time.